Don't forget to like, follow, subscribe, and turn on notifications so that you will receive alerts when there are new episodes. Go get it. That's what I tell them. I've been grinding for so long, I wake up and chase my goals, I go out and I go get it, how to code, that's all I know, I don't succeed, then I don't breathe, success, what does it mean, if I conquer all my goals, then I'm living out my dream, dig deep, go out and get it, success chronicles, compete until it's finished, success chronicles, go take care of your business, success chronicles, it's deeper than just winning, success Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Chip Baker coming to you with the, with the hangout and highlight session. And, uh, man, I am so excited uh, about this one today to just highlight Coach Henry Thomas and his amazing children, an amazing man that has done so many great things in education and faith uh, to make a huge positive difference. And, um, man, I'm, I'm, I'm excited to highlight him and his, uh, you know, people say when you have great coaches, they have a coaching tree, right? But uh, Coach Thomas got that in his house, <laughs> right? So, uh, man, I'm just excited to to highlight him and the family and just to share some stories and, and, and have a good time with our session. So first, uh, Coach, thank you and your family. Thank you all so much for taking the time to hang out with me today. Man, we appreciate you, Coach. We appreciate you, man. And the job that you do with this broadcast that you have. We thank, thank you, man. You. Yes, sir. Well, um, just a couple quick questions for you, Coach. How many years in education? Man, this is I'm finishing up 40, 42 in August. I'll be stepping down, retiring again. That's awesome. 42 years in education. What a true blessing uh, to be able to do that, first of all. But then such a true blessing uh, to everyone that has is, is come in contact with you. And so I just want to say on behalf of them, thank you uh, for that. Thank you for your service. Thank you for your sacrifices. Thank you for, for all you have done and, and how you've done what you've done, because that's a difference, right? Yes, it is. Some people yes, can just do it, but it's a difference when you do it how you how you've done it. And so <laughs> we're just truly that. grateful for that. But what I want to do is just kind of go around the horn, uh, and and we'll start with you, Coach. So the first question, you know, your name, uh, you know, where you're currently coaching, and I already like started with your years because I couldn't hold back on that. But each of y'all <laughs> just tell uh, how many years. Uh, you've been in your profession in which you're doing because like one is not in coaching but doing some great stuff so uh coach we'll start with you uh you know just talk about you know a little bit about your background and some of the things you've done and you already said you've done 42 years this year so uh just tell us a little bit about that man just you know started at, in 1982 you know at uh the middle school down in Miranda City Texas. Uh, just me and my wife, uh, Nikki, Dwayne, and Sweetie came around in September. So we we got going in there, and, and we just kind of took off from uh, middle school coaching to over to Crystal City to the uh, high school level, uh, then to Calvert up in that Heron area. But, you know, that's why we came back in 1987. We stayed in Calvert. From '87 to 2001, uh, uh, pretty uh, Dwayne, Nikki, Tweety all graduated from there. Trey cried when we left because she wanted to graduate from Cal, <laughs> but uh, she ended up being a, a didn't Bronco. So uh, her and uh, James ended up up here with us, and and uh, we stayed stayed in Den for four years. Got the head basketball job over at Louisville. Stayed there for six, finished 29 years, and uh, set out a year and uh, went over to Gainesville State School. I've been the athletic director, football, basketball, and track for the last 10 years. So now I'm, I'm getting ready to, to call it done again. Let's, let's see what uh, what else I can do out there. That's and all, awesome. Yeah. So good, Coach. All right, Nikki, let's go to you. Tell us a little bit about you and, and what you're involved in. Oh, child, what am I not involved in? 
<laughs> so I've been with the uh, employee with the state of Texas for 16 years. And so I just recently got promoted as a program specialist for state office. Uh, so that's my new role. But I've been coaching and mentoring. I mean, I don't do the school coaching, but I did a, a little AAU coaching. Uh, so I, I pride myself in mentorship for the most part. So I'll, I'll look at my young ladies that I've had an opportunity to mentor it over the years. And I, I'm, I can say they made me proud. Um, and so I get up. The purpose of what I do is, you know, I'm always trying to make a difference in somebody's life. So, you know, we wake up in the morning. I think that's kind of the standard that our parents have made, have set yeah. for us is, you know, something you can always lend a helping hand. A lot of times you think that your situation is bad, but when you look at somebody else's situation, they're they're going through it. And so just be having to share our parents with, you know, the Brazos Valley, pretty much. You know, I could say Calvert, but it extends farther than that. You know, I, I come back and people are like, oh, are you Coach Thomas' daughter? I'm like, I mean, how can you tell? <laughs> you know, but just, you know, the compassion that my family always, my parents always extended to people. And now I find myself, you know, as a kid, I'm like, why are all these people in our house? Like, you know, what? we don't even have nothing. But, you know, even what little we did have, you know, we were able to share with other people. Uh, so for me, it's like I have long, long life friends that are really like family. Um, you know, when things happen in their lives, we try to go back and support people as much as we can uh, in the Brazos Valley for the most part. So I find myself, you know, carrying on that. You know, and I'm also the family manager. They don't tell you that part. You know, they just say I'm the one that don't coach, but I'm actually the family manager. There you go. That, that that's your that's your that's your real that's your real role, right? That's my real role, Coach <laughs> yeah. Baker. But yeah. you know, having an opportunity to coach, you know, AAU basketball, I, I really didn't know. I knew I didn't want to be in teaching. I knew I didn't want to go the education route route. I did an internship at one of the middle schools in College Station and realized like that was not what God had for me. <laughs> it was totally a different calling. But just having the opportunity to do AAU, I had an opportunity under West Side Elite to coach with the Ray Micken Foundation. So have a really good relationship with Ray Mickens, who was also a standout cornerback at Texas A&M. Mm -hmm. uh, had an opportunity to coach with Jason Terry with the Jet Foundation and had a good relationship with him and Mark Aguirre, who's, you know, standout basketball players in the in the NBA. And then I also had an opportunity to coach with Liberty 360, which Crystal Moody, she took that organization. A lot of young ladies that she's mentored in that had come through that program are playing overseas or in the WNBA. And so yeah. um, looking back at those young ladies, I mean, they're doctors, they're entrepreneurs, they're accountants. And so, you know, I look at their parents and like, you did a good job. I'm like you already had set the foundation. And so just to have just a little role and I kind of see why my, my dad and my siblings, why they do what they do, you know, because it is a, a sense of pride that you like, you know, I had a little to do with it. You know, I ain't going to take all the credit, but, you know, just a little bit. And so it, it is it, it's something to pride yourself on. So I can definitely see, you know, the difference that they make with the people they come in contact with. And they're they're on it on a daily basis. I tell them all the time, you know, you guys, they'll call in. You call in the CPS report. So you see the issues. But we deal with, you know, the long term. They recognize, hey, it's an issue. You know, and so for me and my part of it, we're here to clean up. And so we're all I, I say we're kind of all social workers by trade. Yep. You know, we're constantly always wanting to make sure, you know, people are, are doing well. You don't want to see people mistreated. So that's it. Well, a uh, couple things on what you said. First, thank you all for sharing your parents with us. And then uh, <laughs> the second thing, you know, how you talked about, um, you know, that's what you were taught. You know, that service piece, it's instilled in us. And it's crazy, you know, because, you know, as you know, my mom was similar, mm -hmm. you know, same, same. And, you know, you catch yourself uh, doing those yeah. same things that you saw them do, like you yeah. said. And it's funny that you said, because there's times I remember, like, man, we're, we're going out doing food drives and mm -hmm. she praying for people. We come to the house and we don't have nothing. We got nothing. <laughs> Right. And yeah, so it's yeah. funny that you say that. Like it showed me yeah. like it's bigger than me. Like it's just seeing that. Yeah. Like she's yeah. like she would say that, boy, it ain't about you. Right. Yeah, yeah. But but just yeah. to see it um was a huge blessing and it allowed me to actually do that in my life because I saw that like that's what you're supposed to do. That's what you're supposed to do. Yeah. Right? Yeah.
Good. That's so good. All right. Let's go to you tweeting. <laughs> Miss, all right. Uh, all right. Well, my resume Thomas is Murray. not as extensive as Nikki's because, you know, she, her resume is very long, right? But um, I am in my 15th year in education. Uh, I started coaching back in 2010-11 season. Mm -hmm. I am currently at Fort Bend Travis High School, where I serve as the JV coach and the varsity assistant coach. I'm in my second year there. Um, yeah, I, I stepped down from a head coach because my son is a basketball player, right? So mm -hmm. as a mother, I like to be everywhere that he is. I like to be in the stand supporting him, right? So being a head coach and him being in New Jersey playing basketball was kind of difficult. So I, I took a back seat. And honestly, I enjoy the role that I'm in now because my job is to assist and facilitate more than being like the head coach of a program and trying to run everything. So I actually love what I do now. I'm also a behavior teacher on my campus. So I deal with the kids that no one wants to deal with. And like pretty much piggyback on what Nikki said, just growing up around my parents and knowing how they always gave and tried to save the world. I took on that same, <laughs> that same energy. Like I can fix them. I can fix them, you know, and eventually, you know, we get through to them, but that's who I am. Uh, I was recently nominated as the Texas high school coaches association, assistant coach of the year for region five. <laughs> so I, I, I really do uh, just love what I do. I love, uh, building those relationships with these kids because a lot of kids don't know anything besides their home and school. So like just trying to get them to be exposed to other things outside of the basketball world and what are we going to do when we graduate and things like that. So as Nikki said, social work is what we are. It's building and just teaching kids to grow and become better and just show them that there's so much more and that basketball is life, just ball in general, like everything we do, even though it's a sports, we're still using skills and strategies to teach them how to be productive citizen when they leave us. So that's what my goal is when I'm working with kids. So good. All right. Trey. Coach Trey Thomas. Yes. Uh, so I started. This is year 11 for me. I actually started. It's funny that my daddy said that I cried when we left Calvert. I started my first year in Hearn with you, Coach Baker. Mm -hmm. And yep. um, I started my career there uh, as a middle school coach and a math teacher. Um, spent two years there and then got a head job in Blooming Grove. Um after that, I went to Corsicana for one year, and then now I'm in my alma mater, Den High, and I've been there six years. Um, I teach math, so I have the class where I teach just like we take on the trade as our parents. I teach the kids that do not like math and gets that second chance to pass the STAR test again in December. So I see them all year round, every single day, and we try to pass this the math algebra one star test. So I enjoy math because a lot of people don't, and I get the joy out knowing that they learn it. And because I have like a eighty five percent passing rate in my class, that brings out the best in me, knowing that Let's go. these kids come back and let me know I hated math until I took your class. So yeah, so good. I'm a math girl, and that's what I get out of being a math teacher <laughs> there you go that's that's great uh it's great when kids especially with a subject like that uh it's great when um you have teachers like you that will break down the fundamentals that's really coaching right you know break down <laughs> the fundamentals of the skills that they need and i think that comes from the coaching background to be great at it and the service background too i'll say that yeah. Uh, being of service and teaching those skills and fundamentals. Uh, before we go on, I love for, and Nikki, since you're oldest, I'll maybe I'll let you do this. Uh, just send a shout out to your other siblings that are not on because I want to show them some <laughs> love too. So, you okay. know, just say their names and just kind of tell what they do. So, uh, <laughs> the one that's right up under me is Michael Dwayne Thomas Sr. Uh, of course, we call him Dwayne and pretty much some people call him Mike. 
Uh, but Dwight actually went to the Air Force after high school. And so a lot of people, you know, he said he didn't tell our parents because he felt like my mom would have probably talked him out of it because he's like he was like the only boy. He always prides himself on that. And then James came along. He's like, I was the only boy until James got here. Uh, so he felt like my parents would have deterred him from going to the Air Force. So he didn't even tell them until like two days before graduation that he was going to the Air Force because he's a maid baby. So technically he needed parental consent because he was actually 17 when he's talking to the recruiters and stuff. So, um, but once he did, so he made that career choice, but I mean, that's been a stepping stone for him as well. And so of course, when he got out, he decided to go to school and he's actually, uh, he has an associate's degree, a bachelor's degree, a master's degree, and he's actually has a couple hours toward his PhD. Um, the other day, me and him, I mean, we talk every day. I mean, that's what we do as siblings because uh, our parents has kind of taught us that all we have is each other. You know, hey, Sim. it's people out there, but you guys got each other back. So when we get into it and get upset with each other, you know, after a week of that, my daddy and my parents, they step in. OK, it's enough. OK, now let's start back talking. Um, so, I mean, you know, we're human. Things happen. Uh, but my brother, Mike, he's actually taking some hours toward his pilot license. So, you know, wow. so having an Air Force base is going to help him, you know, do some stuff. And I, I mean, I think that's just us. Like we're we constantly motivate each other. So, hey, you're going back to school to get your master's. And, and you know, people, we don't think about it. So people say your parents should be really happy. All y'all got master's degrees. And then we look and like, oh, yeah, we do. You know, <laughs> which honestly, Trey, I was like, I'm going to go last. But she actually was the first one with the master's degree. Uh, she went straight through. She got her bachelor's. She got her master's. And we we're all kind of like, OK, like maybe we all need to do <laughs> okay. this. And so yeah. uh, we're kind of that iron shop and iron, you know, like we're constantly, you know, bouncing ideas off each other, you know, trying to make each other better. Um, and of course, I, I say the one I always tell him he's the diva of the group because like, I mean, he's like, we're always picking on him, you know, but he, I mean, he, he is the little big brother for me, you know, he's their big yeah. brother, but he, yeah, you know, yeah. he's a little bigger than us. And so, uh, but he's doing well. And so now he, for the past two years, he's had the opportunity to join uh coach Trey Thomas over at Denton High School. At first we were all kind of like, how's that gonna work? And I think Trey probably like, what was I thinking when I was like, yeah, bring my brother on. And, and so my dad's constantly having to mediate between them but for <laughs> gym time. <laughs> he always wants the main gym and, and Trey. So that that's another little excitement that we have going on in our family chats is, you know, who's gonna get the the main gym because my brother always thinks that, you know, he can schedule whatever camp he wants to schedule and not have to run it by the other coach Thomas. And so, uh, it's it's um, good. Oh, it's look. Good. And, and speaking, speaking of the mic. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's, uh, it's, it's great that y'all have a family media, a family yeah. mediator. Huh? Got to, got to, yeah. because you don't know that coach, look at, that coach Thomas right there is something else. Uh, yeah. You're going to you know, see how peaceful it was before he got on. Watch <laughs> <laughs> like he just gonna disrupt the whole flow. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, well, while he's connecting, you you got us good, Coach Coach Thomas, Coach Mike. Am I am I muted? Can it, are you no, just they mute me you. on in the fam, on Facebook? You. They mute me all the time. We <laughs> we we, we got you. We got you. Well, um, <clears throat> Nikki was just telling us you know, a little bit about who you are and where, and, you know, some of your really neat things that you've accomplished, man, congratulations on all of that stuff. And, uh, she talked to us about, um, you and your sister having a family mediator, having a family mediator there for gym space at the, um, at the school. So uh, that's how far we got so far. So she, she let all of that out there, but, yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, what I want to do though is just kind of go around. I just want to you just you know what's what's a lesson that you learned uh, from your father, from your parents about life, education, or coaching. Just one main lesson, and we'll just go around. We'll do like you know, again, we'll go oldest to youngest. So we'll we'll go with you, Nikki. Just give us a lesson that you've learned. I think for me, it's it's just putting God first. You know. Uh, we're imperfect people trying to live in an imperfect world and, you know, just meet people where they are. And I think that's probably, you know, no matter where my dad is, whether he's at a school board meeting, where he's at a 
city council meeting or, you know, or at church or even leading his basketball team, you know, they always led in prayer. And so for even for us, it's important, you know, that we keep God at the forefront of what we do. And, and I think everything else kind of falls in line. That's good. That's good. All right, Mike, what you got, man? What's a lesson that you, you learned from coach? Um, is it, is it my turn? Yeah, it's you. We on we on you. What's what's the lesson that you've learned from uh from your your dad or or parents on life, education, and coaching? Um, great question. Great question. Education on life, God first. God, family, basketball. That's uh, kind of the principles and the, the mantra we kind of went through. Hard work being pays off. and But the things that I've learned the most is just being dedicated and commitment, being committed to the things we we, uh, we focus on. Never quitting anything that you started, seeing it all the way through. Uh, Witness my dad never missing a day of work. Miss my mom, like, go through cancer, and, you know, basically without telling anybody, kind of keeping it a secret and just seeing when, when I get a sneeze or a cough, uh, that allows me to kind of make it through the military and get through things that we've been through. Uh, just a perseverance. So the, the life is just, you know, we've always went to church. I mean, you know, it with your, with your mom playing the piano at Independence yeah. Baptist Church. And, yes, sir. You know, so we had to do two, three, four church service sometimes. That's kind of unheard of now. But uh, just kind of being committed to what we're doing, seeing my dad having two churches and, and have to go to those churches, wake up early in the morning. And, you know, even now, I still get up early in the morning and go swimming sometimes and ride his most like he's been in a wreck and he's still going to work instead of taking off. So just kind of committing and seeing things through has been kind of prevalent in uh, in my career and in my life. So a little long, but it's, it's just so much to put into one thing but god so 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 true uh and now that's that's okay that it's long because that's the reason we're here to we're here to highlight and celebrate all the amazing things that, that he's done so that's that's all right uh let's go with you tweety let's yeah so you, you know being third being the middle is is kind of hard because everyone steal everything from you right but uh Pretty much what Dwayne just said, uh, God family basketball, you know, he always used to say to his team, um, we can accomplish great things together as long as no one cares who gets the credit. Right. And so, like, just listening to those words, it, it just drives you to just not worry about the recognition and not worried about who who's going to say something, who's not. You're doing it because that's the right thing to do and just treat others the way you want to be treated. So pretty much everything that Nikki and Dwayne just said, plus that which drives us to be who we are, because it's not about, you know, the recognition. I don't do this for the recognition. We don't do this for the money, you know, because we know it's none there. It's what we get, the reward we get at the end. It's the reward we get at the end. Of, uh uh it's just a reward. <laughs> See, I told you he was gonna change up the whole flow of everything. I told you. <laughs> yeah, so it's just, it's, it's just, you know, the the little nuggets that like my parents dropped to us along the way. It's just what's hey, embedded. Hey, Dwayne, mute yourself. Hey, Dwayne, mute yourself. So, yeah, so long story short, that's where I'm at. Just, you know, we can accomplish great things together as long as no one cares who get the credit. So those those are the life lessons that I, I live by. Again, I don't look for the recognition or the credit. I just do what's right. So that's, that's the lesson good. that I got. So good. Trey, what you got? Um, Basically, sum up what everybody just said. <laughs> but in my own words, it's just like, being around my dad, just the way he love on kids and love everyone is what I enjoy. Like not worried about who gets the credit whatsoever. And just having that relationship, like people at my school always or everywhere I go, you coach Thomas daughter. Oh, I love that man. Just yeah. knowing that he's building that he has built, built that foundation to let everybody know 
that you can do this and still everyone still love you. And I've never met an enemy that, from my daddy. Like, I don't know anybody that never told me, oh, I cannot send your daddy. But yeah. everybody, even officials, one official yep. saw me one time in the grocery store and was like, your coach something is on. I was like, yes, sir. He was like, he scratched me. But I love that man. And I was like, what is scratch? My daddy scratched him like he cannot ref in these games, but this referee talked highly about him, and that just shows the type of person he is and the love and respect that everyone has for him. So I I just try to take on what he has instilled in all of us as well. Yeah, it's such a blessing when um you can uh, – because I know how that feels. Like people – to see people love me because my mom loved them. Mm-hmm. Mm. You yep. know, mm-hmm. the same thing uh, here, you know, just to, man, to, just to have the love and outpouring from people because, you know, the way your father was to them, it's a, it's a big <laughs> blessing to be able to have that. Yeah, yeah. So I know I want to honor your time here. So let's go to that last question that I gave you guys. Uh, what drives you each day to make a positive difference. So we're going to flip it here. We're going to go right back to you. <laughs> you like that, Trey? <laughs> we're going we're gonna to flip it here. <laughs> and, and we're going we're gonna to go right right back to you. So uh, what, what drives you uh, to make a positive difference each day in what you do? Um, just seeing the growth in my, my um, players and students, just having that relationship with them, just for them. Like I have old players that calls me once a month and just check on me like, Coach, this is what I did in class. This is what's going on. I got into veterinary school. So the fact that I get to change lives and realize that I'm being a positive role model for young women and young men as well in the classroom, especially for math, math being everybody terrible worst subject and they hate doing it and having kids going to their next math class and like, oh my gosh, I did not know this until you taught me this. I didn't know this. You're the best math teacher I ever had. I appreciate you. And I didn't pass any star test till I took your math class. So yeah. just having that relationship and understanding that I made a difference in someone's life makes me feel good about myself. Just like, oh man, I didn't I didn't think I was actually doing nothing until someone lets me know I'm doing it. I'm like, oh, for real? So just having that opportunity to let them know like I actually am changing some and molding, helping molding their lives as they get older. That's awesome. All right, Tweety, let's go to you. What drives you each day to make a positive difference? Um, pretty much the same. It's the it's those relationships that you build, you know, um, getting invited to weddings, baby showers, and you know, seeing kids that have issues. And this just was this past week, I had a kid to come back to the school, not even a basketball kid, just a student, and because we were dealing with something, and he said, Um, I didn't know where else to go but to come here to you. Like he graduated last year, but he was like, he ain't nowhere else to go. So like that right there, it's probably like, the, it's not that instant gratification. It's just a gratification from something happening, you know? And it's like, man, I made a difference. Just knowing that if it's just one person that you could touch, that's what keep me coming back, you know? And so Trey, I'm telling them the story. She over there crying, like she know the situation. I'm like, Trey, like, hey, people just don't understand, like, you know. <laughs> but I mean, but it, 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 that's the reward that you get knowing that you have le- le- left a footprint on that child, right? And so that's what drives me. I Even with my basketball girls, I had a meeting one day. I posted on my Twitter. I had a meeting one day and I was like, hey, y'all, y'all got to step outside for a second. I'm in a, in a meeting. They was like, okay, they leave. They was like, well, can we just sit outside your door? I'm like, go in the cafeteria and eat. Like, what are we doing, right? And so they, I was like, yeah, that's fine. So they go sit outside the door. So my aide takes them chairs outside. He was like, I don't want them sitting on the floor. So he takes them little chairs so they can sit outside. One of my players, it's four of them out there. One of them decided, no, it's five of them out there. So one of them is recording them. They started playing musical chairs outside my door just because they just wanted to 
they didn't want to be in, they wanted to be inside, but I had something to do. So they were like, we just going to sit outside your door. So just knowing, regardless what I say, do, they going to come back for more. And just having that, just knowing that regardless how ugly or nice I am, it doesn't matter to them. They like, I know you got my back. I know you here for me. And it that's what drives me. And like, I tell you, when I be like, oh, I'm tired. They be like, what's wrong with you? I could be tired. Like I could be tired some days. Right. But it's just, that's just the joy I get from my girls. Just knowing they'll just send me a surprise. Like for uh, Valentine's day, they sent the choir boys over to sing to me. And like, I'm over there crying because it's just those little things. That's like, even though I stay on y'all, I'm hard on y'all. Y'all know at the end, it's all love. It's all to make you get better, you know? So that that's what brings me back every day. But it's just a sense of purpose, you know? Like there's still something left for us to do on this earth. If God blessed us for us to wake up in the morning, it's something for us to do. Uh, for me, I take on a parental role for my kids, of course, because a lot of them don't have parents. Sometimes their rights probably have been terminated. Uh, so I had a kid that I hadn't, had any contact with in the last 10 years, but she wants to go to college. And she calls me on my work phone. She's like, I found your number in one of my old child's plans. And she said, I I'm trying to get into school. And I'm like, where do you want to go? You know, let's start there, you know, cause they just kind of like, I'm gonna go to college because you know, there's, there's some systems set up and some resources set up for these kids who age out of the foster care system. But if you don't look like a certain way, you don't get those resources. Uh, or and people don't try to tell you about them. And so for me, I'm just like, hey, where do you want to go? Let's tap into the financial aid officer at the school so we can get this rolling uh, so you don't have to pay for college. And, and, you know, they and there's a time limit to this. Like, they have to activate this by their 24th birthday to be eligible for it. But just, the, you know, you having a parent, somebody, and there's just something, just a sense of purpose. And being able to go to high school graduations for kids or stand in that gap for somebody's parent that can't be there and, you know, maybe a kid may have surgery and there's not a parent to console them after that surgery. Uh, so for me, my my sense of purpose is like, hey, I, I'm somebody that's a parent role for somebody. Uh, of course, I have two boys at this point. Um, and so I have a lot of family support with my oldest son, you know, graduate high school, pregnant with him. But with the with him just having the idea of like knowing that nobody can be there for you when you're going through hard times and trouble times. And so uh, for me, it's just that passion that drives me every day. It's like, hey, you know, somebody, everybody needs somebody to know that they're supporting them. And so if I'm in your corner and I'm behind you, I'm rooting for you. So yep. you, when you hear your name called, when you're walking across the street, well, you know, as we, when we graduated high school or when we graduated college, you want to hear that somebody is cheering for you. Uh, so just that little bit, because that can take people farther than what you could ever imagine. Um, people can be thinking like, oh, I did so and so and so and so and nobody was there. And in our minds, we it's hard for us to understand, to even sympathize that because we don't know. Even with our parents giving as much as they gave, they still had enough to give us. You know, I couldn't imagine my high school graduation and my parents not being there. I couldn't imagine my college graduation whether it was for my bachelor's or my master's and my parents not being there. I can even imagine having my son and my parents not being there. And so a lot of people think, oh, you, you know, we take a lot of those things for granted. And I have to go back and say, you know, I was a blessed kid because every highlight, down light that I may have had in my life, I can still look back and say my parents were there. Uh, and so because of the profession that I do, a lot of my kids don't have that. And a lot of the profession in the profession that my my siblings have decided to do, they have kids who don't have that, uh, you know, and, and they'll bounce stuff off of me all the time. Hey, can you see if uh, someone, 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 someone happened this? Hey, this is a situation. This kid is saying this. Can you see who I need to talk to to get it? So it, it's really all of us having the resources and the connections within our circle. Uh, I think the other day, Dwayne had a kid same situation had been in foster care getting ready to go to college and he's like who does this kid need to talk to because she's trying to get her financial aid situated and so you know I'm, I'm on it we're emailing and we're getting these kids where they need to be so whether it's on their side and the ISD side 
or if it needs to come to my side, I mean, we're working together as a family to get it, get it to the finish line. So that, I mean, it's just the drive and the passion that we have. That's it. I love it. What I'm going to do, Dwayne, I'm going to go to you first, and then we're going to finish with Coach uh, Thomas as we close. So, man, what, what drives you, Dwayne, each day to make a positive difference? What drives me, honestly, <laughs> what, what drives me is my, my siblings. Like, my siblings, they they – they they do this all the time. They they like like this this can be a comedy right here when we rewatch it. They mute me on comedy. Facebook. We do a Facebook call. They got their own group, so it it motivates me. We're we're like a competitive like everything we do. If it's March Madness, if it's I, I guess in our culture in our Thomas culture, we're competitive. You know, like we we when we say hey I need the remote, we don't we don't walk the remote to you. We throw it and we say think fast. Like we don't. You know, even with my sister and I, she's like, how many district games you won? I'm like, I didn't make the playoffs. I don't care. She's like, well, I won more than you. I'm like, what? 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 No. And I was like, wait, my freshman won more than you. Yeah, so we like, it's like a, a going back and forth. Like we're a competitive, but loving, caring family. And, you know, we, we do it with class. So what drives me is, is, is my family. You know, I, and I, I think it's a calling because I didn't, I was trying to get away from coaching because this is something that's, We've been around all the time. And I was just like, dang, I never can see my dad. I never, unless I'm a manager, like it, it just drove me. So I was like, I, I'm going to approach it a little different, you know, with my kid, you know, if I'm in my chosen profession. But it, I didn't choose it. It, it. it chose me, you know, and I think it chose all of us. It, all of us is coaching, you know, Nikki's coached as well. She's coached with Jason Terry. And, and what, every one of us is coached, coached at a high level. You know, we, we make great connections, but the connections come from the tree. You know, he, he buried us, and uh, him and my mother, they buried us, and that's what it is. So, you know, they're my motivation, you know, and, and, and uh, the kids that we're influencing are just getting blessed because of our calling that God has put us on. And uh, without, you know, and it goes all the way back even before my dad. You know, his none of his siblings that went to college and, and, and our grandmother, you know, Miss Mary, who Trey is named after, you know, uh, she said, my son is going to college. And, and by golly, my dad went to college. And because he went to college, it set the precedence for all of us. And, and, and that motivation is the same thing with me. So, like, now we've all taken a step further. So we all have master's degree. We was like, okay, we're just not going to get master's. We're going to get master's. So our parents, so we're just going to take it that far. With education. Okay, we know now we're going to be homeowners. Now we're not going to just be this. Okay, now our kids, now we're talking about you know, residual income. Now we're talking about generational wealth. So my family at the end of the day is, is my motivation. You know, like I, I came back to Denton because of my family. You know, like I, I came back to coach because of my family. And, and even though my sister gets on me, Trey, she's like, he was the main advocate. Like, tell me what you heard. Did you get hired? Did you get hired? Like as much as he, he was like, he ain't saying nothing. I know he got hired. They ain't telling me like, it was just a competitive nature. Like, even though, like, at the end of the day, we'll get on one of these calls, and it's it's love. And it, and and every day, and then when I had a really, really good team, and I think when when Tweety was struggling, Janisha was struggling, and and they would put it in the group text, like, oh, man, I lost. And then Trey was like, oh, dang, I lost. And then they say, well, what did Dwayne do? Anybody, and, and my stuff would be on Max Prep, but I would never put it in the group chat. Because, you know, I love them so much. Quit doing your face like that, Tweet. You did, Lou. You did have a bad team at Wisdom. What they call it? Wisdom? Is it called Wisdom now? I took them to the playoffs for the first time in school history. I know. No, but not, not doing it. I'm, I'm talking about doing the job. Like, no. I, that's what happens all the time. You're getting the real news. Com like, it's a reality show. You're getting the real news. Like, I'm over here congratulating, talking about what I did. How I spoke to her love language. And didn't say nothing. And she over here making faces on the, on the, I hope it ain't being recorded because people gonna see this tweet. People gonna see it. Yes. Fix your face and have professionalism or you get a tech. Cause like right now you'll get a tech. You'll be ejected. I've not lost my training. Well, well, I do it for my fam. They say when they ask who you do it for, yeah. I do it for the fam. I do there it for the go. fam. <laughs> do it for the fam. Hey, hey, I'll tell you yeah, this. I'm gonna drop the mic. Man, I, I uh, 
when you when yeah. you was talking yeah. to Wayne, I had it on speaker view, but then I saw some of them faces. I had to put it on on her <laughs> where yeah. everybody could see all them reactions. I told you, Coach Baker, he wanted to go last. I told you. <laughs> But but we told you he was going to change the dynamics of this. Oh, we knew man. it. We knew it. That's, That's what he awesome. does. That's so good. <laughs> Thank y'all so much for for the entertainment. No. Yeah. <laughs> but, he what too a fun. trying to change his background. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but what I want to do is just, uh, <laughs> is just end with you, Coach Thomas. Um, I just want to, you know, just kind of maybe ask you, uh, you know, what has driven you, uh, you know, over the years uh, to make a positive difference? You know, as you've heard these stories, you know, as you've heard for years, you know, as as I try to tell you every time I see you, thank you so much for, for what you've done. You you weren't even my, my coach. <laughs> you know, I just, from afar, you know, just the interactions. And so um, just thank you so much for that. But just over the years, what what has driven you, Coach, to make make a positive difference? Man, pretty much, I guess those those uh, those four that we got online here, uh, uh, Miss Thomas, uh, Net, uh, it's been behind me. It uh, the bookkeeper all the way from Miranda City to Crystal City to Cal. Got me a ticket to state championship game. Man, when <laughs> when I'm muted, when I'm I'm muted. muted. You're not muted. When we uh, yep, we uh, <laughs> when we went to the state tournament, she was there. When uh, we did uh, different things, she's always been there. So, these these four right here, uh, just trying to make a positive uh, impact on them, letting them know. I I think, uh, man, I it's Nikki probably Nikki and Tweety. Probably not gonna remember it. Dwayne, he may remember it. We was on our way to Chilton game. We were coming back and we stopped in Marlin at the chicken place. And uh I was getting ready to order. And here go Nikki, the senior in the class. I got it. I got that. I got it. I got it. She's ordering the food for uh, for the for the basketball team. Boys, girls, JV and everybody. You know. And and it's stuff like that. I sit back and I was sitting on the bus. I think Chilton might have beat us that night. I be by the one, whatever it was. I was just sitting there, and she and her and Tweety was in charge of the food. Uh, and I did everything. I just I let them handle it. And I just paid for it, you know. But but I but I do this, you know, mainly for them and uh and and the other people that we haven't that we've uh that I've had in contact with, you know. I uh from eighty two to. <laughs> 2024. Uh, I just got off the phone with my quarterback, uh, my middle school quarterback from 1982, Noe Gonzalez. You know, that's the kind of stuff that uh, when Nikki was talking about, Tweety, Trey, Dwayne, you know, the impact they have on people. That's that's me. That's kind of what I've done, you know, for for 42 years. And uh, man, I'm I'm getting ready to end. And I just hope that I've I've uh, impacted somebody's life. Along the along the road. Oh, coach, you you've been packing a whole lot of lies, <laughs> and that's that's the reason why I wanted to come on today and just highlight you and and highlight your coaching tree, <laughs> your <laughs> your coaching tree in the house, <laughs> right? <laughs> just to show y'all some love and appreciation. And so Thank I just want to, yeah, I just want to say thank y'all so much again for taking the time to, to hang out with me and, and be highlighted and share some stories and provide oh, some yeah. entertainment. Dwayne. Yeah, yeah, all the time. Well, Coach Baker, thank you for giving my dad his flowers while he yeah. is yet in the land of the living. Uh, yeah. You know, a lot of times we wait till it's too late and we always say, I wish I would. But one thing I appreciate about you and I always share your post because when it comes across, especially when you interview my dad, you're giving people their flowers yeah, as they're living. Yeah. Uh, you and, you know, we, we come from that church background. And so we know, you know <laughs> what it looks like at funerals and things like that. Mm. But, you know, now you see the importance of that. You know, life is short. You yeah. know? And so for us, it's like, hey, we try to, you know, like I said, we ain't, we're not perfect by far. But <laughs> right. uh, we try to know, like. Hey, we're important to each other, you know, and yeah. I, yeah. I, I mean, we really appreciate you and Udi, you know, yeah. hey, that's well, our yeah. family, you know. Well, oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, oh, so. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, yeah. And, I mean, and as I approach my 38th birthday, I just really, oh, it's like she said, 
And she said, like, just take it. Sweetie, God. Okay, man, I'm not, I'm trying to chip. I'm just, 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 just a little bit. I'm just, these people, I don't, they ain't my motivation no more. They ain't my motivation. My kids, my kids, my kids, my motivation. He <laughs> changed it up on us. Uh. Because baby, yeah, he didn't have to kid. say his age. He could just say it approaching my birthday. He, he had to throw no age out there. You know why would he do that? Why would he do that? Oh my <laughs> gosh! <laughs> thank you, thank you, Coach Baker. Thank you, Coach Baker. I thank you. It's amazing. It's amazing what you do. Yeah, it man. is. Yeah, we appreciate just, you, just, man. Just individually and just going down the line to just, um. It's really cool to see the traits in you, uh, kids, that he has, right? You know, just to hear. That's why I wanted you guys to get an opportunity to share those stories, to share those things that you learned. But, like, it's one thing to, like, to like say that stuff. We can talk all day long, right? Yeah, but it's yeah. another thing to see those that that love and and work ethic and grind and appreciating people and showing love and it's another thing to see that in action like yeah. period like it don't yeah. matter who you are what you've done and we're going to show you love we're going to take care we're going to have expectations you're going to do yeah. what you're supposed to do but we're here for you right yeah. and just to see that in action man it's a big time blessing and so just want to encourage y'all to keep doing your thing you. and again just want to say thank you so much for taking the time and audience thank you so much for checking out this session we'll see you next time god bless god bless right. bye guys go get it